Hello! In this video, I'll be reading you a book from RAS Plus entitled Mighty Glaciers. It's written by Ned Jensen and you can find it in level N. Before I read this book, we're going to look together at the table of contents. So this chapter book will introduce what glaciers are. Second chapter will be about the types of glaciers. How do glaciers grow? How do they move? Changing the earth? And what happens when glaciers melt? So our inquiry question for today is, how do glaciers change? And how do they change the physical environment around them? And how does that impact earth and living things? Some of these chapters will be directly connected to our question, and some other will just be some other chapters we can read to gain more knowledge about this topic. Chapter 1. Introduction. The Earth's surface constantly changes. Wind, water, and heat wear down mountains and crack stone. But some of the most dramatic changes are caused by giant pieces of ice and rock called glaciers. Glaciers move slowly over the land. They carve out cliffs, valleys, and pears as they go. When glaciers melt, they leave behind lakes, rivers, and hills of soil and boulders. So as you can see, the introduction is giving me a clue that in this book, I will find some chapters in which I will learn more about how glaciers change the physical environment around them and how that might impact living things. Types of glaciers. Mm. Now, before I read this chapter, I'm going to stop and think. Do I really expect to find any information about how glaciers change the physical environment and impact living things in this chapter? Mm, maybe but not really. Let's read and find out. Types of glaciers. Two common types of glaciers are continental glaciers and valley glaciers. Continental glaciers form at the north and south poles of the earth. These huge sheets of ice cover vast stretches of land. Continental glaciers can be so thick that only the tops of the mountains stick out above them. Much of Greenland and Antarctica are buried beneath continental glaciers. Valley glaciers form on high mountains that rise above the snow line. Above the snow line, snow covers the ground all year. Even in the tropics, valley glaciers can form on the tallest peaks. Like rivers of ice, Valley glaciers move through long, narrow valleys. So as you have noticed, that chapter was more an informative chapter in which I gained more knowledge about the types of glaciers, but it did not really provide me with any answers to my inquiry question. My inquiry question is, how does Earth change? How does the physical environment of the Earth change? And how does that impact living things? Let me check if chapter 3 will provide me with any information on that. How do glaciers grow? In some places, the temperature stays below freezing for most of the year. Snow piles up much faster than it melts. Each new layer of snow presses down on the snow beneath it. The lower layers of snow become squashed or compressed. The compressed snowflakes become ice crystals called fern. The fern crystals squash together as more and more snow presses down on them. Eventually, the fern turns into a huge slab of ice known as a glacier. So again, this chapter was more about how glaciers are formed. Let's go back to our inquiry question. Our inquiry question is, how does the physical environment of the Earth change? How does the surface of the Earth change? And how does that impact living things? Mm, I think this new chapter will give me some information on that. How do glaciers move? I'm sure that as they move, they're going to cause some changes around them. 
probably to the physical environment of the earth and also probably to the living things. Let's read together and keep those questions in mind. Glaciers begin to move when they reach about 30 meters or 100 feet thick. That's about as high as a 12-story building. The glaciers become so heavy that gravity pulls them downhill. Gravity is a force that pulls things toward the center of the Earth. It makes objects fall and roll down slopes. The movement of a glacier is called flow. The heavy ice at the top of a glacier compresses the ice below it. Even above the snow line, ice melts when it is tightly compressed. The melted ice becomes slippery, allowing the glacier to slide. Sometimes the top layers of ice move faster than the bottom layers. The ice cracks. A crack in a glacier called a crevasse can be hundreds of meters deep. Continental glaciers form in the middle of continents. They flow toward the coasts. Valley glaciers flow down mountains. A very fast glacier can flow 20 meters or 70 feet in one day. But that is very unusual. Most glaciers travel only a few centimeters, less than one inch, to 30 centimeters, which is about one feet a day. Mm. Now, I can definitely understand that glaciers change. Do you think this change also affects the surface of the Earth? Pause this video and think about this question for a minute. Now, this chapter will definitely give me so much information on this topic. Let's read it together. Changing the Earth Like giant bulldozers, glaciers push piles of rocks and soil as they slide forward. These piles are called moraines. Some of the rocks and soil get stuck in the ice. The rocks scrape the land beneath the glacier, leaving huge scars. Wow! Now, I can definitely see a change to the Earth's surface. I can also look at the picture to see what's happening when glaciers move and how the rocks scrape the land. Can you see the marks and the carves that they are making? Some glaciers scrape off entire mountainsides. Valley glaciers carve deep U-shaped valleys with steep cliffs. When a glacier flows below the snow line, the bottom melts, forming a river. Some glaciers carve valleys that reach all the way to the sea. Sea water fills these valleys, creating fjords. Continental glaciers flatten the land. Now I'm going to stop and think again. I have read about so many changes that are happening to the physical environment of the earth, that are happening to the surface of the earth. Stop this video and think about the cause and effect connections that we have read about in this chapter. One thing is definitely leading to the other. You might want to take a note about that so that you can understand it better. One example of a cause and effect relationship is on page 12 I read that as the glaciers push piles of rocks and soils and move forward, that's the cause. The effect is that the rocks and the soil get stuck in the ice and scrape the land. So I can see a connection here, a cause and effect connection. So glaciers move, pushing rocks and soil, that's my cause. And then what happens? The rocks and the soil scrape the land. That's one connection. Think of some other causes and effects. So, so far we have answered one part of our inquiry question, which is what causes changes to Earth's surface? How does it happen that the surface of Earth changes? Now we are going to focus our attention on the second part of our inquiry question, which is how does this change impact the living things? 
Now I can tell that living things that live in areas that have glaciers must depend on this snow and this water to survive. So the living things that live in that area are probably animals and plants that can survive in cold places such as perhaps bears. Um, can you think of other animals that can survive in such areas? Or maybe other kinds of plants that can survive in cold areas? Do you think people live in areas where glaciers form? I'm pretty sure they would like to ski on some of them. So that's how the living things depend on glaciers. But what happens when glaciers melt? How does that impact the living things that are depending on them? Let's read the last chapter and think about that question. How does the melting of the glaciers impact living things that live in that area? When glaciers melt. Some glaciers melt or recede and eventually disappear. Glaciers recede when the weather gets warmer or less snow falls. Receding glaciers leave their moraines behind as long ridges of rocks and soils. This soil is called till. It can be good for growing food. Ah, let me stop there. So when glaciers melt, the snow leaves behind its soil that is good for growing food. Wow, so I'm pretty sure that the humans that live in those areas can depend on that physical environment by growing some food there since this soil is rich and can be used for planting. Let's read some more and find out more about how living things depend on that. Glaciers may also drop huge boulders when they melt. Sometimes glaciers create lakes and ponds when the ice melts on the land. Aha! Uh -huh. Now I can think of another idea. If the melting of the glaciers is causing lakes and ponds, then the humans that live in that area will probably also benefit from this water body by perhaps swimming in it, uh, using the water to wash their clothes, um, using that water and making it fresh water for drink. I'm pretty sure some living things will start living in the water as well there. Fish and some other type of marine life and perhaps some plants that grow underwater as well. So you see how changing the physical environment is impacting the living things there? Let's read and think about that a little more. It's your turn now. As I read the following page, I want you to think about how does the change of the Earth's surface impact living things? And how do these living things depend on this physical environment? Conclusion Glaciers are one of many things that give the Earth its beautiful and interesting shapes. In the past 100 years, many glaciers have receded. The Earth's temperature may be getting warmer. Scientists are watching glaciers to see how they are affected by temperature changes. They can learn a lot about our planet from these enormous rivers of ice. Now that was a good book to think about our inquiry question. What causes changes to Earth's surface? And how does that impact not only the surface but the living things that survive in that area? You may also want to go to RAS Plus, look for this book, read it on your own, and think about all of these ideas again.